Hi. <laughs> uh, how are you doing? Okay. Uh, welcome along. Uh, my name's Bruce. Okay, Bruce. And this is my classroom in the forest. Now it's kind of snowy and you may notice it's actually a tiny bit freezing, which is okay. Dress for it reasonably, at least. Uh, I have some extra clothes stashed over there. Uh, you might not notice those, but anyway, uh, welcome to the channel. I hope, hopefully, or welcome to this video. Ho hopefully, you've been you've been following along and you kind of know what's coming and you have a sense of what it's all about and and all that, and that's great. But uh, anyway, you know that if you know or if you don't know, uh, I'm gonna put this down here. Put that down there for a minute. All right. Okay. Next. You know what I like to do is uh, I like to talk about people. I like to talk about some things. And I like to talk about uh, an idea. And the ideas tend to come from, they're kind of related to economics, but my, the connection may seem a little divergent, but that's, that's okay. All right. And the thing I'm going to talk about today, because it's uh, kind of cold, I'm going to touch on it briefly, is uh, heat pumps. Okay. Uh, and, and if you go back a bunch of videos, you'll notice I did a little segment on a on a grammatical construct in the English language. It's called yeah, but. And what happens is once you start uh, speaking with someone or explaining something or a, you're sitting in a classroom or at a lecture or, or you're watching uh, whatever and someone's going along, they're, they're following it, and then they'll say, oh yeah, but. But, 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 and it's a, uh, it's this all purpose interjection that, that, uh, people, a lot of people tend to use and, uh, and there's a name for them called the Abbots and that's it. Uh, however, uh, right now, uh, on the matter of heat pumps, I'm just going to give you a little practical example here. I'm going to say that, uh, I'm in Canada. It's not rocket science to figure that out. It's cold, also not rocket science. It's not that cold because it's snowing. When it's super duper cold, it doesn't snow. It's just, it's just cold, but nevertheless, it's cold. And what, what exists, even though it, to us it's cold, what exists in the atmosphere exists here, exists other places, but, but let's just say the easy one to get is the atmosphere. What exists in the atmosphere is energy. Now, it might seem cold if you happen to be standing outside just uh, fresh from a, you're, you know, you're, you're underdressed, you're wet, you're a bunch of things, you're in the wind, and it's cold. What is cold? Well, cold might be zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold might be minus 20 degrees Celsius or whatever that is in Fahrenheit, I think it's like 10. Or it might be minus 40 degrees Celsius, which conveniently is minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If it's minus 40 degrees Celsius, it is still, in the cosmic sense, warm. Okay? Uh, absolute zero, which is zero degrees Kelvin, which is minus 273-ish uh, Celsius, is everything stops. But so if if you're above absolute zero, it's it, it's warm in the cosmic sense. So the, the heat pump and the yeah, but. The question is, okay, can I get a heat pump for my house? The answer is absolutely yes. The question is, does it make sense in my circumstance? For, for your house, does a heat pump make sense? The question is, the answer is, yes, it makes sense. And they say, well, yeah, but I live in Alaska where it's cold. Yeah. In the cosmic sense, it's not cold. There's lots and lots of energy in your atmosphere. You can take that energy and use the heat pump to pump the energy from the atmosphere and concentrate it into your house and make it more comfortable. Okay, uh, what about efficiency? If you go back in a few of my videos, you'll notice that I had a, I went on a bit of a diatribe saying that efficiency is this word that's uh, not helpful. Uh, but, and in the sense of heat pumps, uh, you're gonna get an efficiency number of like 400%, which means that for every unit of energy, electrical energy normally, that you put into the heat pump, you are going to get four units of heat or four units of comfort or four units of joy from it. And the reason I'm going on this again, because I talked about them before, I said a heat pump is a toaster for your house, don't overcomplicate it, is because this is where the rubber meets the road. Okay, it's cold, uh, the house is warm, 
the energy is coming from the heat pump, period. Okay, now, what if it's minus 40 degrees Celsius? Can you get a heat pump that's gonna work at minus 40 degrees Celsius? Yes, you can. Now, if you happen to be living in a place where it's actually minus 40 degrees Celsius, you're gonna notice that it is not minus 40 degrees Celsius all the time. In fact, it's minus 40 degrees Celsius relatively rarely. Although I must say that I did once live in a place where it was minus 40 degrees Celsius for six weeks continual and it was and then it got to minus 20 and and it felt like it it, it felt like you're in the caribbean at the beach oh my gosh but anyway um that's it okay so heat pumps uh skipping all the details are heat pumps good absolutely should you get one absolutely if you're building a new house should it have a heat pump absolutely if you're renovating your home should it have a heat pump absolutely if you're considering a retrofit of a large multi-unit building should it have heat pump absolutely if you have a, uh, a commercial space should it have a heat pump absolutely if you are building a new place and it uh, uh, uh i'm going to go on the assumption that that you're going to have it uh, well insulated which is uh, it really ought be and the standards of construction do vary wildly across North America um, in some places they're better than others and in some places the logical conclusion is they're not as good as others and you should be able to enunciate what is meant by good construction but with the assumption that you're you, you got to insulate anyway uh, should you have a heat pump? Absolutely. If you're going to build a place, have a heat pump. You're going to build a, a thousand unit apartment complex, should have heat pump? Absolutely. There's no scenario where the answer is no heat pump. Now, the flip of it is, should you have com a combustion appliance, which means a furnace, like a furnace that has a, a direct flame, or should you have a, a boiler that's going to heat up uh, hot water and use that to, to uh, uh, as a method of getting the heat into your house? Absolutely not. It's crazy. You should not be having any combustion in uh, in a new thing in 2023. Uh, it's madness. Now, the reason why this still exists is just uh, inertia and uh, what a friend of mine referred to as a, a guild-like mentality. Uh, the reason why things exist is because they exist. The reason why you do it that way is because, well, we've always done it that way. Okay, and in some regions of the world are less accepting of change than others. I used to make a joke that the easiest thing to be in, in the, a job to have in, in North America was being an Allen Allen. Bradley salesman selling Allen Bradley control equipment to industry, to factories, to automation, because the re because if you go into this giant factory, like you might say a five million square foot factory or a one million square foot factory, they're making widgets or flusels or whatever the heck it was, and you'll notice that all of the switching equipment, all the electrical equipment, all of the the uh, the logical control equipment it's all made by alan bradley and has been there since 1960 and that's just it so if you show up and you say you know what we have this other stuff and it's better well good luck with that because change is is a is a is a affecting change is, is a is a challenge okay anyway that's that's it uh long and the short of it heat pumps are good moving this thing along the thing I want to talk about here for a second, or the person I want to talk about, is uh, it kind of comes to mind in context of a previous video or an earlier video, is uh, a guy I got to know a little bit, uh, Walter. Walter Gretzky. Uh, the Gretzky name may sound familiar because Walter is the father of Wayne Gretzky and the Gretzky family, and uh, there you go. Uh, some of the story is that, what I want to say is that Walter, if you're looking for uh, a model of kindness, was Walter Gretzky, and in the context that, that I knew that I knew him, and uh, uh, at some point in in Walter Gretzky's life, he had a. Uh, I want to use this a little bit. You got this this thing here. Okay. You can talk about. Uh, Bad. Walter. Okay. Walter. There. Walter. Okay. Now, Mr. Gretzky, Walter, uh, famously is the father of Wayne Gretzky, arguably the greatest hockey player ever lived. 
All right. Uh, also famously, at a certain point in, in his life, Walter Gretzky had, uh, had an illness. He had a, I, I think it was a stroke. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, there, I apologize that I'm not, you know, this, these videos are not the pinnacle of research. Okay, they're a lot of personal experience. Walter Gretzky had an illness. And then Walter Gretzky had a recovery. When Walter Gretzky recovered, he had a, he was left with a lingering effect of his illness that was also, I believe, a core aspect of Mr. Gretzky's personality. And that was that Walter Gretzky needed for everyone in his presence, every single person in the room, every single person within his purview. He needed every single person to be having a good time, to be happy, to be attended to, accommodated, and there you go. And if you've watched, uh, if the World Junior Hockey Tournament just completed, congratulations Canada, but if you watch uh, Wayne Gretzky playing in the World Junior Tournament, I think it was in 1978 or 1979, you can find the videos. And Wayne Gretzky's scoring goals, and Wayne Gretzky's doing all this stuff, and and it's magical. I'll tell you, uh, you know, the guy as a hockey player is, is just supernatural. Or or we have other examples. I mean, in in the sporting area uh, or the fields of human endeavor, I could I can go on. But now I'm talking about Walt, Mr. Walter Gretzky, and I have had the privilege of being in the room of Mr. Walter Gretzky and observing how amazing he was at achieving his goal of making sure that every single person within his area was absolutely happy. He was supernatural. He had a, it was wild. And, and he would gather people around with, by force of, of just uh, magnetic charisma and Everyone would feel good. Now, the fact that he was Walter Gretzky, let's remove that for a second because he was he was a little bit of a known figure, but it didn't matter. Uh, if any human being was was had this, that, that was a, a, not even a tertiary factor. That did not a, exist as a factor, his, his renown, but his profound compassion and his profound ability. And he would, and he was, uh, I think the word is protean, he was protean in his approach in that he knows, you know, that people are different. Not everyone is the same. Not everyone has the same needs or wants or, or quests or desires. And Walter would just manipulate the situation ever so slightly according to the person that that he was with he was uh, chameleonic in this in this respect and it was and if and if you skip the early part of Walter's life and you just focus on this wow what an achievement I'll tell you and and then Walter was a singer he could sing he would kind of kind of sing he's pretty good and Walter would play the piano He'd play the piano now my experience with Walter was uh, I was sent to a place and I, I met him and uh, my, you know, we were, goal was to, to uh, get us some photographs of Mr. Gretzky for, for a magazine. And uh, so we're there and he, it, this was, this as a goal didn't even enter into his mind that this was the purpose, but he saw these people and he said, oh, we have to, you know, like, they're not having fun. So he says, oh my gosh, there's a piano. So he's like, play the piano. Oh my gosh, we're singing. And I bring all these people over here and we're singing. And then I was getting some photos and, uh, and then Walter says to his friend, he goes, hey, make sure we get some with that guy. Make sure that guy's, that guy's good, meaning me. And I was like, okay, you know, da -da -da. And then uh, there's this thing that exists in human communication. Uh, it, it's a, a conspiracy. People like to be drawn into conspiracies and secrets. Hey, so Walter kind of, at one point, he kind of calls me and he grabs me like this and goes, da -da -da. and he says, uh, hey, we got some sandwiches in the other room. Let's go. It's like, whoa, because I mean, look at me. I'm a large person. I, I like to, I like a sandwich. I said, let's come on, sandwich. Okay, let's go. We're having a few sandwiches, having a few songs, having a few everything. And it, I, I, there wasn't a person with for a block around that did, didn't feel good uh, being in the uh, being within a block of Walter Gretzky. And um, the reason I'm going on about this is because. Uh, 
because if we can find this, if you have this, everybody has this in, inside of you, okay? It's there somewhere. I mean, it might be buried. It might be deep and dark, but it exists. So if you can reach down and go, uh, 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 and pull this out and use this as, as a tool to uh, help other people achieve happiness, then what's going to happen is you're going to be happy. And you know what happy people do? Happy people... Uh, happy people uh, beget. Uh, it's a word. It's a great word. It's kind of like a bi biblical word. Begat. There's a, a section of the Bible. It's called the begats. But now I'm a non-religious uh, person. I'm a I'm as secular as you're going to find. But uh, uh, the Bible does exist. Some some guy wrote it. Probably a few people. Uh, nice nice book. But anyway, the begat. So happy people beget. Remember this, this, this I like to do is this is our stuff, our resources, and this is our knowledge, okay? And this is the set of all the things that we can do with our resources and our knowledge. And going back to one of the earlier, uh, and I'm not making this stuff up. I mean, I'm just repeating what exists in the book. Uh, uh, there's people, there's businesses, and there's governments, but there's this idea of the production possibility of the world. And, and if you have an idea and your idea is good, that idea will eventually rise to the surface and you can uh, use your communication, right? You, commu you wanna communicate your ideas as best you can. And if you don't have the language to communicate your ideas, then work at developing your language. And if that language is mathematics, well, for practice, right? Practice. And if you find it a little bit challenging, uh, trust me, um, it, it, it's, it, it's a journey. It starts with a step and the best way to complete the journey is just keep walking. Okay. So, uh, that's it. Uh, wow. Walter Gretzky, I'll tell you, great guy. Heat pumps. They're fantastic. <coughs> and, uh, by the way, uh, it's uh, it's a little chilly here, which is okay. And uh, I, I just want to say uh, I want to you know thank Mr. Gretzky for being as uh, really he's kind to everybody. So you can't say thank you for being nice to me because guys just nice to every everyone and and not like nice. And we talked about niceness and kindness, but kindness is 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 the is niceness in in practice okay if you're walking by and you see someone that that's shoveling their walk well <laughs> niceness is you say hi good day how is everything and kindness is you talk stop for a second hey you need a break you grab a shovel and you you, you do a few shovels uh, that's cool but anyway um okay my name's bruce this is my channel it's uh there you go it's people it's ideas and it's a little bit of things, no sponsorship here whatsoever. I mean, you're crazy. I think I have the least. Oh, if you if you like the video, please hit like. If you can leave a comment, that'd be great. Any, you know, leave a comment. Tell me I'm uh, how silly I am. That that's fine. Say say whatever you want. And uh, mainly enjoy your day. And remember that uh, the role of uh, the individual in society is to maximize happiness. So if you can't maximize your happiness, well help somebody else and you'll notice that you get a little bit happier uh, along the way. All right. Thank you. Bye. Oh. Okay.